everyone, it's Sarah, the owner and maker behind Multiverse Nature. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, big welcome back. I'm so glad you guys are here. I have some exciting things to share with you that I kind of alluded to in my last video. And I'm sorry that I had a delay, but <laughs> in between weeks, but we actually had a big celebration here, so I wasn't able to to do that. And we went apple picking. So <clears throat> anyway, um, this is going to be a little bit scattered. I didn't take notes. I just really wanted to get a video in and share some exciting news with you guys. So uh, first of all, shop update information. There are a couple advents still available in the shop and that time is, I am almost to the point where I can switch it to a, uh, instead of prepaid, it'll just be the 2022 advent calendar purchase because I will be shipping those out within the next week here. So uh, my goal this weekend is to get all the last minute little details wrapped up. Um, primarily it's packaging the yarn up. That's the main point, which I'm really excited to dig back into all the wonderful colors again. I'm really, really excited to knit on that. So I, I hope you guys are excited as well. Um, for those of you who have that have been patiently waiting because you did your pre-orders, those will be shipping out within the next week here. So I'm really, really excited. So Make sure you keep an eye on your inbox because you'll be getting a message with the tracking information. And like I said, that will be within this next week for the 2022 Advents. Um, but there are just a couple available. So if you guys do want a 2022 Advent, if you haven't purchased one yet, if you have, but you're just dying to get another one, <laughs> the colors are very cozy. And that is, they were definitely inspired by the photo that is on the listing. And I included the link below if you'd like to check out the listing. And um, I'm really excited about it. Looking forward to knitting it. And I hope that you guys are as well. And are excited about Advent season. I think it's going to be a roller coaster ride, but I'm really excited to work on the habitation throw, which should be nice and relaxing. <laughs> I need that in my life. <clears throat> anyway, so that is Advent. I'm pumped about. I know a lot of um, other indie dyers, I've noticed they are getting their advents ready to be shipped as well. So it's, it's just a really exciting time and um, hope you all take part in it as well. Let's talk about uh, works in progress first. The first one that I'm going to talk about is one that I did not talk about I think last time I spoke with you guys. This is by Leslie Ann Robinson. It is her um, Coffee and Jewels sweater. So I have now, since we spoke last, here we go, I think, I'm trying to find my little, my progress keeper's hiding. Here we go. Oh, progress keeper is a super adorable from, I believe it is Bluebird Miniatures. I don't know if this is going to get blown out. It's the cutest little cupcake progress keeper. It's adorable. She makes really cute progress keepers. Um, she doesn't have a lot in stock. She just kind of makes a batch and when they sell out, they sell out. So definitely uh, follow her on Instagram if you are interested in buying any of them because they're super cute, but they go really quick. So as you can see, I have made some serious progress. The last time we spoke, I was above the sleeves. I've now since split from the sleeves and I'm trucking along down the body of the sweater now. So it is all brioche. These are all multifarious nature colorways. Um, and it's brioche is two colors at once basically if you're not familiar with brioche. So this is um, Varying colorways here. I've got Vecna on here in the background and then uh, Aurora And then we have cranberry and Vecna <laughs> I have to look at it to see which color it is. Then we have um, Wilting roses and in the background, it's off to Oz. And then off to Oz is in the foreground here. And then we have, I believe it's Vecna in the background. Nope, Wilting Roses. Wilting Roses is in the background. And now I am just starting to get into the next repeats, which it is um, off to Oz and I think Aurora. Pretty sure. It is, that's the fun part about brioche. You can change up your color and by layering your colors, it almost creates a new color in and of itself. So highly, highly 
recommend this pattern so far. It is time consuming. It is, um, I would definitely say an advanced beginner. Anyone can knit anything. But if you are looking, if you're a new knitter and you want a challenge, this would definitely be a challenge because I say it's, it's a challenge in the sense that it takes focus for someone who's been knitting for a while. So I've been knitting now, I think around two years, like hardcore knitting, like all the time for at least two years. And this takes quite a bit of focus for me. If I'm not paying attention, I make mistakes. So I am... I have had to rip back already, but luckily it's just like a row of ripping back, but that's a lot of stitches. So it's just, but it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's absolutely beautiful. I'll show you what the finished photo looks like. Obviously this is in a different colorway, but um, this is out of her book. So this is her brioche knitting for beginners and beyond. This is Leslie Ann Robinson's book. It's amazing. This is the first pattern I've done from it, but there are plenty of patterns in here. I don't want to give away too much of the pattern, of course, but this is what hers looked like. So I am just around this area here. So I've still got some knitting to go, that's for sure, but I'm really excited about it. It's just flowing nicely, and I love knitting with these colors. They're really pretty. And it's going to be a nice little sweater to add to my collection. Really nice, pretty colors. Um, yeah, I, I have a variety of sweaters. And this one is another one that I've made. As you can see, my little <laughs> woven in ends are kind of popping out here a little bit, but this is Andrea Mowry's Comfort Fade Cardi. So I I made it, the size fits, but I feel like I should have gone up a size a little bit just because for a cardigan, I kind of want it to actually fit a little bit looser. So I probably would have gone up a size, but not a big deal. Tangent, anyway. Next pattern is, so I did work on three this week. Um, I worked a little bit on the brioche uh, coffee and jewel sweater I just talked about. And then I worked quite a bit on my lunch breaks. This is the, um, it's by Fox and Fig is the designer, the company, the company Fox and Fig. And the design is the Myel Shorty Sock. So this is my second ever male shorty sock. They're so fun to knit. There's just so much detail. This is also in Multivarious Nature colorways. This is pumpkin, which is very, for this time of year, fall. <laughs> and then we've got landscape, which is a limited edition colorway that I just have a limited amount of. So once it's gone, it's gone. So if you guys love a beautiful variegated green, blue, speckled colorway. Definitely recommend that one. Um, this colors on here, in case you're wondering, this is also Multifarious Nature colorways. This is Pumpkin Dusk, which is a super moody, deep, deep, dark navy kind of blue. It's amazing. Then we go into Cranberry, which another wonderful color for this time of year. Then there is um, Caramel Corn, which is right here. It's a nice variegated, cozy color, and that is caramel corn. But yeah, I'm, I'm loving this little sock. It is just flying off the needles. This is the second sock of the two. So I am almost there. I am just an inch or two away from finding, like doing this toe decreases. And the toe is also going to be pumpkin, as you can see from this one. So I know not too exciting because you've already seen this one, but I just want to show my progress. To you guys it's just flowing along here really really quickly so excited about that lots of progress i'm hopeful that the next time we speak that this will be done <laughs> because I'm, I'm really looking forward to casting off a bunch of projects because i want to cast out a bunch more like the advent habitation throw definitely want to cast that on <clears throat> and then i have some other exciting things i want to cast on and you will understand shortly Excuse me, I need some of my water. All right. <clears throat> Next, I have been working on a Melody Hoffman pattern, which is using Putalopi, which is Icelandic wool. It's wonderfully rustic, super cozy wool. I have knit three sweaters in Putalopi now. Well, I should say two. I'm working on the third. This is my third. 
So this is going to be a little tricky to see, of course, because it's on small needles and I'm just working from the top down. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, I keep clearing my throat. This is the Wild Posy sweater, which I have yet to knit. It's my first time knitting this one. And I'm such a fan of Melody's patterns. Now with this dark color, it does make it harder to see the texture. And it also does because I can't have this like nice and flat. But I am just starting to do these little bundles going on here, which is like kind of the posy part of the pattern. I'll show you the picture on the cover so that'll give you a better idea if you're not familiar with it. So this is, uh, it has some lace areas. So once it's blocked, <laughs> I don't heavily aggressive, I don't heavily or aggressively block uh, my sweater hand mitts. I kind of like to let them settle, but there is some lace work. That's kind of, again, the posy end of things. And then there's these little like posy patched bis biscuit type things. That's what I'm doing right now. And that's where I'm at. I absolutely love knitting with unspun yarn. I love knitting with my yarn, of course, but it is such a treat to knit with unspun yarn. It's very unique. It causes you, like I said, to slow down and you really take your time to knit. And that goes back. It kind of, when I knit with like um, Superwash, I definitely am a process knitter, but I find myself really trucking through it to get it done, which I want because I want to wear the item. But with unspun yarn, I really find myself just enjoying the process of knitting with it so much. And it slows down. It's super cozy. Not the best thing to be knitting on in the summer, of course, because it's very cozy. But in the cooler months like fall and winter, these are this is one of my favorite treats to knit with unspun yarn. So this again is Plotilope. I think the colorway is like midnight blue or something. And it is a, um, I think I, I got this directly from Istex, uh, which it's not really Istex, it's Alaflos. Alaflos is the <clears throat> company out of Iceland and I ordered it from them, but it was two years ago. So I don't know if it's in stock. They do run out of stock very quickly from them. However, if you go on uh, yarn.com, which I've purchased from before, and they have great shipping, they do a really nice job. That's in the US. They uh, have a lot of colors that do tend to be in stock, but it's by single plate. I'm pretty sure you can't buy the large ones, where through Elephos, if you want to get a full um, I can't remember, bundle, I think it's a bundle, it's like 12 plates so it's a lot of yarn but you get a discount because yeah you just get a discount because there's a lot of waste between the plates it's a whole thing <laughs> if you look up Plotilope and uh, you'll find videos all about getting the bundles and everything but yeah really really enjoy knitting with it it's a very beautiful color it's super deep blue it's not solid you know, it's got some variation. There's kind of lighter flecks of blue, darker flecks of blue, almost like a black blue, navy. Um, it really adds some dimension to it. And I'm excited. It's fun. It'll be a different color for a sweater for me, which I'm excited about. And yeah, it comes in a plate like this. It's definitely more rustic. So if you tend to be on the sensitive side to wool, uh, if merino makes you itch, then I do not recommend Icelandic wool. It will really make you itch. It's um, It does have a prickle factor to it. I do notice it more during, like if I get hot and I'm wearing it, which doesn't happen too often. But if I do, like I was at work a while back and the temperature at work got really, really hot because they it was at between season time, you know, so the buildings can't really adjust very well. And it was probably, I'd say, in the high 80s in the building. It was very, very hot and it was cold outside. So I wore a sweater because it was cold outside. Did not account for the fact that the building would be so hot. And with that sweating, I, it would look the hot heat and everything. I did get itchy wearing it. So if you are sensitive, I don't recommend Plotilope. But if you don't mind, um, like, any of the other uh, products by Elephos. So 
Letlopi is another one of theirs that I've worked with, which is really, really soft. I do find this to be a little bit more prickly than Letlopi. Um, I've never worked with Einband, which is like kind of their lace weight style, but so I'm not quite sure how it compares to that. But I can say compared to Letlopi, which I think is the spun version of this, that's why I don't quite know. But the color that I did with the Let Lopi was a very neutral, I don't really think it was a dyed one. It was not a dyed color. I think it was just natural. So it tended to be softer. I think it had a little bit more lanolin in it, where this color is very much a dyed color. And there's not much lanolin in it at all. It, there's a little bit, because you can smell it. But it's there's not a lot of lanolin in it. But if you get a color that's much more natural, like any of the browns, uh, some of the light grays and everything. I think even some of the dark grays because they just blend it with the like black wool. That Those colorways tend to be on a little bit of the softer side because it has a lot of lanolin in it. So it's wonderful. But that is again by Melody Hoffman pattern and that is the uh, Wild Posy sweater. So I highly recommend Melody's patterns. By the way, they're really fun to knit and Pretty easy to follow. I do find they do err a little bit more on the advanced beginner because she does tend to, I don't think she assumes, but I think it's just the way she writes because she obviously is a very experienced knitter. I would say it does lend itself that you understand how to do certain things a little bit more because I have found error if I just follow it blindly when I first started knitting, but now that I've been knitting for a while, when I when I follow her patterns, I can do it with less error because I understand the construction, if that makes sense. <clears throat> I've only done sweaters that she's created, so definitely recommend her patterns, though. Definitely do. Okay, so now, very, very exciting. <laughs> I have acquisitions. I don't, I didn't talk about it last week. I'm pretty positive I did not. If I did, ignore me. <laughs> but if I did not, because I don't think I did. I don't think I did. I'm so excited. You guys. I finally... <clears throat> so speaking of unspun yarn, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Nutiden. Out of Sweden yarn. I'm really excited. So, I splurged. And I did purchase some of their yarn. I've wanted their yarn for a long time. I'd say a good, oh gosh, at least a year or so <laughs> since I discovered it. I've wanted it. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I just haven't found myself in the position to purchase it. And now I splurged. There were colors, so many colors that I just wanted so bad. They're beautiful. <clears throat> I love their process. They're a very small business. They're a couple, if you're not familiar with Nutiden, it's a couple out of Sweden, and they make small batches of unspun wool. They do plates. They currently are starting to also do um, roving, like not, <coughs> excuse me, not roving. Um, yeah, like bats, if you want to look at bats, so that you could spin from it. You can also spin from the unspun yarn, of course, but... So I got one color that was from the new collection, which is the one I wanted so, so bad. So, so bad. I stayed up late to get it. <laughs> and one of the other colorways that, not one that I purchased, but one that looks very similar to that flotilla B I just showed you, that dark blue, that one sold out within 12 minutes. So if you ever want to get new to Den, one, follow them on Instagram because I always missed out on their updates because I didn't follow them on Instagram and I, I'd find out about it months later. So I want to follow them on Instagram and then when you follow them on Instagram, if there's a color you really, really, really want, I highly recommend you hop onto their website when, like, the time that they're going to list it <laughs> because 12 minutes is not a lot of time and they sold out of a color. So. The two other colorways that I got were actually from a prior collection that they actually had extra of. So the way they do it is they do very, very small batches. They list it. If 
it doesn't, like, there's a time frame they list it for. This is my understanding, at least. The time frame they list it for, and then after that time frame ends, they close down their, sh their like, shop where you purchase it. Then they ship all of their sales. So, at least that's my understanding. I could be wrong. But two of these colorways were from the prior collection, and I'm so excited because they're two colorways that I really, really wanted. And because I missed out on that launch, I didn't think I was ever going to get them. And I was able to. So without further ado, I'm going to show you the first, the color that I originally, originally drew me to the collection, and then the two colorways from the next collection. I did kind of allude to this on Instagram, if you follow me on Instagram, but now you can see them in all their wondrous glory. So the first color is Lucra, and I got all of these in sweater quantities because if I'm going to pay that kind of shipping, I'm going to get the sweater quantity. It had come in little packages and it's just squished. So all of the air is like squished out of it and then they open up and it's fluffy goodness of beauty here. So this is Lucra, which is a dark brown and it has kind of a greenish tone to it because there's yellow running through it. And it's just absolutely beautiful. I'm just having to admire it because it's it's really neat. <laughs> If you've never purchased Nutidim before and you are curious, I will tell you this is definitely softer than Plutolopi. It is. I've heard many people say that and I was skeptical because I thought it's on spun yarn. What's the difference? Well, it's a different breed of so wool for one. This is definitely a different breed. It's very soft. Of course, if you're super sensitive to wool, you'll probably be sensitive to this too. But this is very, very, very soft. Um, yeah, this one has a lot of lanolin still in it. They did specifically say that. That's the other thing I really like. Follow their newsletter. If you follow their newsletter, they send you the information and it will tell you about each colorway. So this one, it did say that there is high lanolin content, which is wonderful. They called it lanolin rich, which, oh my gosh, it smells so good. I love it. I just love it. And it's so soft, it's so soft. So that's Lucra, so I definitely am going to do a sweater out of that. These are all going to become sweaters. They are. So the next one is a beautiful neutral. This is Vagen Hem. I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right because I don't know Swedish. But it is a beautiful neutral. Super cozy, creamy. There's brown running through it. There's cream running through it. It's just a beautiful balance of neutral color. So this is, oh, again, so soft. I just want to cuddle it. <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful. There's lanolin in this one as well. I do feel like Lucra is a richer lanolin content, but very, very soft and wonderful. Again, super soft. And the prickle factor is definitely less than Plutolopi. Icelandic wool is definitely a, um, a less fine breed, so you'll feel the prickle. Well, this is a finer breed that they blended this with. It's very soft. It's definitely more than a merino, like thicker, so it has a little bit more of a prickle than merino, but it's not bad, you guys. I am very impressed. Oh, again, smells amazing. So this is Vagen Hem. And of course you can't purchase these unless someone's selling them. Like unless someone bought them and then they're selling them. You can't, you can't purchase them from them. But next is the one I was super pumped about. When I saw that this was available again to purchase, I was like, that has to go in my basket first, even though I wanted Lucra, of course. I, I had to, I had to. It's called Vivir. If you are not familiar with this colorway, I understand, but if you if you are, you'll understand why I'm so excited. So this colorway was a special. Um, she started <clears throat> she started dyeing up colorways that were variegated, which is unique because most of her colorways are solids, like the first two colors I showed you. But this is one of those that she did variegated, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So it's uh, inspired by Swiss chard, which the colors 
she just got it. I mean, she nailed it. Nailed it. It's so pretty. So what I'm going to do is make a sweater out of this. <laughs> and look at this. They're all different. I mean, they're similar, but different. Oh my gosh, these colors, you guys. And some of them blend together and cause almost like a graying look to it, but it's not gray. It's like, it's a whole nother level of color. It's so pretty. I'm just really, really excited about it. So obviously you can see the plates are different sizes. The total weight of the bag of wool is five. So I actually have like six, yeah, I have like, I think six uh, plates of wool here, but it is 500 grams total. So what I'm gonna do is just take each plate, totally willy nilly, I don't even care how it turns out. I think it's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna hold them double. So obviously I'm gonna have like this color and like this color held together double so it'll make this amazing fade of color. I saw so many projects, oh my gosh. If you look on Ravelry and you look up Vivier Nutiden, there are so many projects, not a ton, but so many beautiful projects made out of this colorway. And the way it fades, it's gorgeous. So the pattern I wanna do is a pattern I actually have done before. It's a very uh, simple looking sweater and it's amazing. I think I'm gonna do the split hem this time. I did not do that the first time. And it's one of my favorite sweaters that has like, a, just throw it on sweater, I wear it often, is the Forager by Melody Hoffman. Again, another Melody Hoffman pattern. I love her patterns. It has a split hem or, or you could do a solid hem. So I did a solid hem before, but I'm definitely thinking of doing the split hem this time. And the one I made prior was with worsted weight yarn and it was definitely more fitted. I'm thinking of making it like how she's got her fit where it's a little bit looser fit and do it with this gorgeous color, which is again, Vivere. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's so pretty. And if you look at some of the projects on Ravelry, when it's knit up, it looks like a sunset. It's stunning. And this color looks so good on everyone because she is a wizard with color. <laughs> she just does an amazing job. These colors are beautiful. So yeah, I mean, each plate, sorry for the crinkling, but I just have to show you because I'm just so excited. It's just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So again, that's the Veer. This is all new to Den Yarn. It's out there on Sweden. Small company. Um, just love what they do. Love how they try to keep things as natural as possible. And yeah, highly recommend them. I purchased again, three sort of quantities. So I think that's a, the amount you, you can't, I, should, I need to word this properly. So there, <laughs> there is a limit, like you should read their website if you're gonna purchase from them. There is a, uh, when you order their products, there is a amount. Like if you order too much, which isn't too much, but if you order a certain weight, that you actually have to split your order in two because of the shipping. So, and then the shipping of course goes up because you've got these two, you're paying basically double the shipping. So they do try to do that to, to one limit so that everyone has a chance to buy it. And also so that, you know, they can keep their prices reasonable, which it is very reasonable. I, I want to say for a sweater's quantity, I'm not 100% on the pricing, you guys, but I think it was around 70, uh, don't quote me, around 70 US dollars-ish for that. So that for a sweater, and it's really, really nice wool. That's not bad, that's not bad. So, very excited. So if you're curious, check out, follow them on Instagram. If you become, like, you want to purchase their yarn from them, follow them on Instagram and fo follow their newsletter. Like, sign up for their newsletter because they email out well in advance so that you can plan ahead because depending on, they, they list at different times and their time zone is obviously different than some people like myself so you do need to kind of like plan ahead if you want to make sure you get it so i really want to let you guys know that i was really excited about that i didn't want to talk about it until i got it because it had to come all the way from sweden <laughs> but i'm really excited i did and i'm excited to make this forager sweater again so much fun wonderful knit very easy to follow um yeah highly recommend it highly i'm doing it twice the fact that i'm gonna st st stitch this puppy twice tells you something i don't repeat 
patterns often, except for obviously the Mayel socks. I repeated that one. So there's certain patterns I do like to repeat and that says something about them. <laughs> That's for sure. So I'll quick give you guys life update. Not sure really other than, okay, super exciting. I mentioned in another video, we have two chickens and a duck and super exciting news. She has laid eggs now. So she is a egg laying chicken and they are now providing something other than entertainment because they're really entertaining. So that's exciting. And I think the rooster is not out to get me anymore. <laughs> I think we're friends now. <laughs> but yeah, they're entertaining. They're really funny. Oh, the duck also likes water now. He has discovered that he might be a duck, even though he still probably thinks he's a chicken. He does like water, so he does go in our little pond and splash around, which is really cute. So that's fun. And uh, yeah, otherwise, just... Advent stuff. I'm going to work on that after I'm done here recording. I'm going to get some of that Advent stuff done, some chores around the house because, you know, you just, you got to get it all done. And yeah, but I wonder what you guys are up to. Have you ever knit with unspun yarn? I am, I'm a huge fan of it, obviously. So if you have, if you have knit with new to den, I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to hear what you've knit and let me know any pattern recommendations because like I said, I want to do the forager sweater for the ver 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 I can't talk <laughs> for the one colorway, but the other two, I'm still trying to figure out which sweater to make out with each one. So I'd love to hear any recommendations. That's for sure. I'm always stalking Ravelry, finding so many patterns, so many patterns and I also, of course, want to knit on Andrea Maori's new pattern that, speaking of a cardigan, her, um, I think it's called the Big Cozy Cardigan. I want to do that one so bad with that new uh, colorway, which I'm pretty sure I told you guys it's called. I don't know if I told you what I named it. Hazelnut? I'm pretty sure I can. <laughs> I, yeah, that's what it's called. It's over. It's in front of me. But yeah, I definitely want to knit with that one, but I do need to find actually probably dye another color for the collar section because I really want to have another neutral to go with it. So I'm, I'm really pumped about that. But anyway, I think that's about it. Oh, the colors are in full bloom here in Michigan. There is just so much beauty right now. I mean, oranges and reds and oh, it's gorgeous. So I, I don't know what it's like at your end of things in your part of the world. But it is beautiful here. Another fun fact, we discovered we have hazelnut bushes. So we have four hazelnut bushes. So I've been going through those and trying to collect as many hazelnuts as I possibly can. There's still some that fall to the ground and I let those be. I kind of, I pick up some, but I do leave some because I know, you know, the critters, that's part of what like they eat too. So I try to share, I try to share with mother nature here. I try to be good, um, you know, take some, but not all. And I hope you guys don't hear all the noise in the background. <laughs> My husband's watching TV in the other room and I'm right next to him, so. You may hear it. I'm sorry. I'm really trying to record the best I can. The light is definitely going away here. So I'm just going to wrap things up. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're staying happy, healthy, and I hope you're creating. And I look forward to chatting with you soon. Take care. Bye.